Hey everyone and welcome to the channel, my name is Ash and I'm here with another review roundup video. In these videos I discuss a selection of games I've been playing and they can be on a whole host of different systems. So make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe and check out what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to jump straight in with the first game. It's Sugar Shack. Now, this came out in September 2023 from publisher Freedom Games, and I was lucky enough to be sent a copy of this on Steam. Now, this is a game where you have like, this cabin, and you've basically got to make sweet treats. Very, like, wholesome, cosy style game with uh, an interesting premise to it. Now, you can play this single or online with up to four friends. It's also Steam Deck verified, which is awesome, and it supports Xbox controllers as well. Now, this one is interesting. You basically get to customise the world as you play. It's like laid out in these hexagonal tiles, and you'll unlock new tiles as the story progresses and you complete like tasks and stuff like that, and you can basically lay them out interconnecting however you want. So you basically get put into this uh, shack. It's a bit run down, it's all been closed up, and bit by bit you'll repair it, fix all your ovens, build up your like tavern as such so people can sit and eat and buy from you. You'll eventually add more and more like NPCs to your like world, which is really cool. And it's all about sort of like gathering resources, uh, baking, selling your produce and stuff like that and bringing the community back from basically nothing. Now, it's not perfect. It starts off pretty slow, and at points there are times where resources are very limited, which makes it a bit grindy and a bit of a drag at times. But it has a really cute aesthetic, and it's really fun to play with multiple people. Now, I do like that they've focused on, like, Quebec, like, arts and tales and stuff like that. I think that's really, really cool. The story's interesting enough and it like progresses as well as you play through it. If you like games where you like have to uh like chop your trees down, get the wood to then craft things, making cakes and treats and selling them, and you like that sort of wholesome side of it, like Animal Crossing meets sort of like uh resource management, then I definitely recommend this one. There's a lot of content to it and you will eventually get more and more of these tiles to expand. I don't really want to spoil the story or anything like that, but it is linked to the story as well. It's interesting. I like that. I liked having it, like, basically the devil's wandering around all the time, and you can interact with him. He tells you basically not to go upstairs, which is where this tile-like system exists, and because you do, basically, you ignore him because you want to go to bed, you unlock the ability to sort of reshape the world and it's really cool it's cute it's fun it's nice to play it's better with friends i feel like it speeds it up a little bit when you're playing it with friends on steam it's priced at 16 pound and 75 pence and it also has steam achievements as well not perfect but really fun i did enjoy this one looking forward to seeing if they do any updates on it or add to it or anything like that because it's cute but i feel like it definitely could be improved on going forward okay next up is reveal if i pronounce that right i apologize if i haven't r-e-v-e-i-l now i played this on xbox it came out on the 6th of march 2024 developed by pixel split and published by daedalic entertainment i was lucky enough to be sent a copy for this video and this is a sort of atmospheric horror walking sim puzzle game and my god it's really really good like it looks fantastic like graphically and in the sound department it looks great it's creepy mm, fantastic it's sort of set in like areas inspired by circuses of the 60s and yeah basically you play this guy you wake up you're not sure where you are your wife and daughter aren't there 
and you basically go out trying to explore, trying to piece together your memories and stuff like that. And it's creepy, it's weird, and it's bizarre. Now, there's no combat or anything like this. Like I say, it is just a absolutely gorgeous, like I say, walking simulator-style game. Lots of eeriness to it, creepiness and everything like that, and a good selection of puzzles. Now, it's not the longest game. You're looking at sort of four to five hours, depending on how quick you get through it. The puzzles are not going to break your brain, which is nice. They're, they take a little bit of thinking, but they're never too like too complicated, so they pull you out of the story and the atmosphere and stuff like that. Now, it is really creepy. It, it gives you like a real sort of sense of trippiness at times as well, which is cool. And they've just done a, an absolutely fantastic job. Now, the only downside is it is a short game, but in that sense, it never outstays its welcome. On Xbox, um, it's playable on Xbox Series X and S console, so it's next-gen only. Now, I really enjoy this game. It's priced at £13.74, so you can't go wrong at that. Like I say, for that price, you're getting an absolute bargain. There's also a... like an like a special edition which has like digital art book dev commentary uh original soundtrack included and stuff like that which is nice this game is fantastic it's gorgeous creepy setting it's the sort of game i absolutely love and there are multiple endings as well so there's some replayability there yes it's short and some people won't want to play through it again but it gives you a reason to at least go through it multiple times. And yeah, really good. Never too taxing, but the atmosphere, story, and everything else is amazing. What a fantastic horror-based sort of walking simulator puzzle game. Mm, keep doing games like this, guys. Oh, fantastic. Fan, fantastic. Okay, next up is Space Docker VR. Now, I played this on the PS VR 2 on my PS5, priced at £9.49 from Cat Commandos Limited. And I was lucky enough to present a copy for this review. Now, I must admit, I didn't get on with this one, and not because of the game as such. It gave me really bad motion sickness playing this one. There's a lot of spinning a lot of like uh, fast turns at times and stuff, and it just made me feel queasy. Not every VR game does, quite a lot don't, but because of the nature of this game, I think I'm going to have to play it a lot more to sort of get more settled with it, but I must admit, it it knocked me for six a few times while I was playing it. it. It didn't make me feel good. Now, this is a hardcore flight sort of space simulator game where you are in this cockpit of a spaceship, you have to navigate space and all these hazardous environments, collecting like crates and stuff like that, and then docking into like giant spaceships to like deliver the goods. Now, this is one of those games that has realistic Newtonian physics, basically meaning that you can cut through space like butter, there's nothing there, you just keep going, there's no resistance. So it's all about like thrusting and stuff and manoeuvring. It is hard. It, it will take you a long time to get used to it, unless you're really good at these sort of games. It's interesting, though, and I like the cockpit aspect. I think the what you can see and everything from your cockpit is very good. But, it not like I said, the, the level of motion sickness that hit me like over... It like came back as a massive wave, and it absolutely messed me up. And... Very few games have done that to me in VR, but it's all of the spinning and like movement and stuff. It, it was like being on like a weird boat and it like spinning you around or like going on a roller coaster, then going on the waltzers and eating fish and chips and an ice cream and then doing them all again and then doing something else. And it, it just did not work for me, unfortunately. But that's 
me personally, obviously, at least you can sit down and play this stationary. Still, the the weightlessness of space and stuff and the movement won't be for everyone. So if you get um, motion sickness easy in VR games, I'd maybe give this one a miss. It's also rock hard. There are like like a career mode. There's also like weekly missions and stuff like that, and procedurally generated missions you can do. There's also a race mode where you've got to do it in a time limit and stuff like that. It's not bad. It also has like leaderboards, which is cool. You can improve your cockpit with upgrades and everything. But yeah, I I wanted to play this more and like it more. I like space and stuff like that, but. Man, it, it messed me up. <laughs> and it's one of the few PSVR 2 games that has messed me up. So I probably won't play it as much as I, I would like to, unfortunately. But it is what it is. It still looks nice. The environments are interesting. I love the the world and stuff. I love the layouts and how it's set out and how you can play and everything like that. It's a good idea. Not going to be for everyone, though, unfortunately. But at least it's at a decent price. I mean, I'd love to see him do demos of VR games so you can test see if it's going to knock you for six. But, hey, it's also available on other VR platforms, and it's had uh, its 1.30 update as well, which has added a whole host of new things since launch. So, like, definitely check it out. Added 120 hertz support, which is nice. And yeah, a load of other new additions with music and upgrades and all that sort of missions and stuff like that, which is it's nice for free. So keep up the good work. Cat Commanders haven't done bad at all here. It just doesn't work well with my stomach. <laughs> okay, and last up, this video is a tiny sticker tail. Now, this is available on pretty much all platforms. It came out in October 2023 from developer and publisher Ogre Pixel. They kindly sent me a copy on Steam. Now, I previously played one of their other games, which was Lonesome Village, and I had an absolute blast with this. But a tiny sticker tail is available, £8.50 on Steam, Steam Deck verified, full of Steam achievements, supports Xbox and PlayStation controllers. And I really enjoyed this one. It's only a short game. You can probably get through it in about two to three hours. It's a pretty short story. But you basically have to change the world around you by turning things into stickers. So basically anything can be picked up, put into your sticker book. You can then pull them out and place them in different places. And placing these stickers will then create them in the world. And it's like a, a large like island and each area is like a one screen section. There's a whole host of characters to interact with. Lots of puzzles and NPCs you deal with. They may need you to move them. So you have to like stick them in your sticker book, move them to a new place. They may be looking for things. You have to collect them. And you can only have so much space in your sticker album. So you have to sort of pick and choose what you're picking up at certain points now it's really cute you play as this cute donkey there's also a shop where you can buy like um cloves and like themed island decorations like from christmas and halloween and stuff like that which i thought was nice it's gorgeous it has a lovely cute art style it sounds great as well. It's really, really cute. It has a ton of replayability, this game. Like, there's so many reasons to replay it, to see things you haven't found previously and stuff like that. But I can't recommend it enough. Yes, it's short. You'll get through it in a couple of hours. But there's tons and tons and tons of reasons to replay this game. And it's beautiful. It's sweet. I'm going to end up buying it on Xbox because I want to replay it and get the achievements for it and stuff like that. I had such a nice time playing it on um, PC. Just, it's so simple in its sort of premise, but it's just amazing. Like, you'll grab the, the sun from one place and the, it'll go dark in that area until you put the sun back out and stuff like that. I just thought it was really cool. It's simple. It's got nice characters to interact with and find and like do missions for 
and it has like a linking story. And as you progress, you'll meet new characters that'll give you items that you'll need for other quests, which will allow you to progress further through the island and stuff like that. Really fun. There's also like uh, one that crafts when you give them trees and stuff like that as well. A fun little heartfelt game. Definitely, definitely worth playing at a great price. But anyway, guys, that's that for this review roundup video. That's four games on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC that I've been playing recently. Any of them jump out here? Honestly, I enjoyed all of them, apart from Space Docker VR, just because of the motion sickness. The game itself wasn't bad. I liked what it did, but uh, it just was awkward for me to play basically um a stick a tiny stick tail was fantastic reveal was fantastic everything was great like i said i love it when i get to review and play tons of interesting games but leave a comment down below let me know which games you think were the best are there any you've played or are there any you want to play and other than that we'll see you next time guys bye for now